I'm going to first start by, uh, I'm going to read over the problem, and, and when I read over this problem, I want to take the whole picture in. What do I see even before I, I read this, this paragraph? Because there's a lot of information before that. Well, I always want to look if there's any type of diagram. All right, so I have this, this diagram. It's got numbers. It's got an X. You know, if I had to make a call just by looking at that, I might say this has something to do with a pattern. Patterns. And usually, when you think of patterns in mathematics, I want you to start thinking about algebraic thinking, patterns, equations. That's usually a, a real good clue. Okay, what I noticed there's a reading portion which I'm about to do, which should enlighten me on this diagram here. But I also always want to look at the answer choices. And when I look at the answer choices, I'm actually given a lot of information. I see these uh, equations. Now, these aren't just equations, they're algebraic equations. So we should take a moment and, and just address what an, algebraic equa what an equation is and what an algebraic equation is. If I did 2 plus 3 equals 5, this would be a, an equation. If I turn this into x plus 3 equals 5, I've just turned it into an algebraic equation because what I've done is I've created a, I've added a variable. And when you have a combination of constants like the 3 and variables like the x, it becomes algebraic. It's an equation because it has an equal sign which compares two different uh, values. Now, what if, let's say hypothetically, what if I sort of, uh, I t here's my algebraic equation, what if I get rid of the, the equal sign? Well then it becomes, an, it's still algebraic, but it becomes something called an algebraic expression. So a lot of times you'll, say, you'll see something that says evaluate the expression. All that means is it's, an alge it's written in algebraic form, it's got a combination of variables and constants, but there's no equal sign. Okay? All right. So when I look at these answer choices, when I look at all these, let me get rid of this real quick and go back to here real fast. When I look at these right here, I see that they are equations because they all have the equal signs and they're algebraic, algebraic equations because they have the constants and the variables mixed in together. So I'm going to be dealing with algebraic equations. Now I'm going to read it. Why didn't you read it before? Well, this is the information I can get even before reading the question. You should be able to get this information too to set you up for when you read it. Okay, here we go. Number 21, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. Which of the following algebraic equations could best be used to explain why for any three by three cross like the one shown above, the sum of the numbers in the vertical rectangle is equal to the sum of the numbers in the horizontal rectangle? All right, so this definitely has to do with algebraic equations. And if, when you go back in your, in your studies, you got to highlight, start thinking in terms of, you know, key concepts where you can break this, these problems down. Got to look back at algebraic equations. And then also has like language like vertical and horizontal. And these are just, these are, these are little things, but, um, you know, this one right here, I guess, is the vertical. This one's a horizontal. And it's saying that the, the sum of the numbers in the rectangle box is horizontal. I guess that would be 13 plus 14 plus 15 is equal to the sum, this is the horizontal, is equal to the sum of the vertical. Let's see, 9 plus 14 plus 19. Now I would write that out so you can see it. And by writing it out, you sort of make the connection. This is a, ver this is a horizontal, this is a vertical. Is it accurate? Well, don't take their word for it, test it. 13 plus 14 plus 15, what is that? That's like 32, it is 32. And then um, nine plus 14 plus 19, well, the nine plus the 19 is 28 plus the four, um, plus the 14 would get me, did I do that right? Did I make a mistake? Is it 42? I sure hope not, I don't want to do the video again. It's 42. And this one right here would be 42 as well. Okay, 
you know what, I made a mistake, but that's okay because when I was doing it over a second time, I caught myself. And that's, that's fine. It does work. And I had a double check in there. 42, so they both equal each other. All right, well, how does that, how, where can I go from here? How can I turn this into an algebraic equation? Here's the key. This is the key. They both share a 14, correct? So let's turn that, well, let's say we said that 14 is, represents x. They both have x. Now what would 13 be, if we're saying that four, if x is 14, what would 13 be in, ter in terms of 14? Well, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be x minus 1? And what about 15? Wouldn't 15 be, if x is equal to 14, wouldn't x wouldn't it be x plus 1? So now I just turn this one into an, an equation using x as my uh, shared variable. 13 is x minus 1, 14 is x, 15 is represented by x plus 1. Now how does that look on this one right over here? Well, let me, uh, let me give myself a little bit more room here. That's going to look something like this. We have x is a 14, and the 9 is represented by x minus 5. And 15, 19 is represented by x plus 5. So if we look at our answer choices, the only one that matches that right here is, is this bottom one. I know that's kind of tricky, and I know a lot of people that are watching this right now, so a few people are like, yeah, that makes total sense, I get it. But a lot of people are like, wait a second, I didn't really get that. I knew it involved algebra. And because it gives me a clue on algebraic equations, right away I'm going to be thinking about a combination of variables and constants. When I see something like this, I make x the common variable. Now I write everything in reference to x, knowing that you know we're saying x is equal to 14. That helps me say that if I, wanted to rep thir if I want to represent 13 in terms of x, all I do is do x minus 1. And that gets me to 13, if x is 14. And then I build out from there. So I want you to, I want you to go back and I want you to sort of practice this on your own for a moment. You have to practice it and visualize it on your own and make sure it makes sense. And then, you know, you can go back and you can look at this problem. And if you see something like this on the test, you'll know how to answer it right away. Another thing you should be thinking about with this problem as we move into algebra is we're moving into pattern thinking. So I want you to start getting in the gear that a lot of everything that we do now with algebra, well, so much with math, but in this particular section here, we're going to be looking at patterns. And we're going to be following certain rules and patterns, and so I want you to click over into that, okay? Thanks a lot, everyone, for watching. The answer is D. Check out one of the Harvard Square workshops that are coming up, um, or you can go to GoMath and register for one-to-one uh, uh, -one tutoring or see more of the videos. Thanks, team. Have a great day. Thank you.